Welcome back to the Pontus campaign. Last time we finished conquering our home territory and got peace with Rhodos and turned to new wars for our new bonus objectives. This led to a city assault where due to the enemy's large numbers and our own lack of supplies, we were actually almost wiped out and Ariobazanus nearly died. But now it's time to rebuild and come back for another go. We're a couple of turns after that defeat, and I've just been recruiting new troops. But the Cartley decided to come and counter-attack me, and I didn't really expect this. Since they just sat there the whole time as the war went on previously, I presumed they would continue to do so until I was ready to attack them. But now they've come to hit Ariobazanis. This battle is probably winnable, but I was scheming something. I thought if I retreated from this, I might retreat into range of Mithridates to the back there, and then they would come over to attack Bur both of us. Instead, they completely called me out by just attacking the settlement. The garrison is nothing, so we're just going to lose that battle now. I'm pretty sure I could have won if I'd actually stood and fought that, <laughs> but it seems I underestimated them again here. Although they didn't actually take the settlement, they just sacked it, and that really isn't a big deal because there was only one building in it, and I can't remember what it was. It was something unimportant. So that means we'll just go back to where we were within a turn or two. And now we've got our chance to try and fight these guys with Mithridates as I had wanted. Threw in a bit of a mercenary unit there, really expensive cav unit, just to make us a bit more powerful. Completely didn't need it because, as you can see, the enemy armies just levied spears and they're now damaged from that fight with our garrison and our army is now nice and shiny and new and has lots of powerful units in it so there's not much the enemy can do against us here. Mithridates bringing a nice wall of pikes supported by ton tons of Galatian warriors, a very strong combination in theory, we'll see it in action in a bit. For now we'll just cut down these levied armies, they disappear so now Cartley is really going to be in trouble, that's going to make our life much easier when we go for our counter attack. Most of our losses seem to be concentrated on that one mercenary unit so Mithridates being very efficient in uh, using that unit up because now we can just disband it and not pay them, so that was <laughs> a nice little eventuality there since they were very expensive. So here we are a couple of turns later, went on to make this attack and things are looking surprisingly easy actually, we probably could just auto resolve it. However I didn't really want to, I wanted to make a fight of it in order to somehow get revenge for what happened last time, I'm not sure exactly what I was thinking. I ended up thinking we might be able to in some way get the enemy to sally out against us by hiding Mithridates so the enemy thought that Ariobazanis was weak. However I then noted that both our armies are out of food again so we're going to get that debuff. I wasn't expecting that since we had just started these armies I presumed they would cross the border into enemy territory with full supplies and last a while. Once I broke the siege I was then able to get supplies, not quite sure what's going on here. I think I might be actually buying supplies from the enemy or something, a little bit confusing. I ended up just leaving that situation to come over and take a little look at the Seleucids. Of course we need to constantly try and bribe the Seleucids to become our ally, that's my current bonus objective or one of them. And in this case we completely failed by offering them a couple of thousand, we'll have to save up some more money. Now in the next turn I came back to this siege and thought let's just take this place. And I was actually even stronger this time thanks to replenishment having, having gone through over the last turn. And I think I had my supplies as well, I'm not quite sure what was going on but anyway. We'll take this place, now we'll have all the supplies we need for a while at least. That was a mission as well so we'll get some free money and we can also see that it was pretty important that I did take it in that turn because cultures were coming over with an army of their own and might have swiped it from under our noses so we've stopped them from doing that. Now we're going to focus on the next project for our armies that is just moving over to the east to attack Ardhan. There's nothing there, no army at least so that means we can just storm it most likely so I'm going to set up to do that right away. Here we are in the next turn, I've just declared war on them, nothing came of that since they're not diplomatically tied to anyone, and now we'll just go in for this siege. And curiously I noted that both of my armies back over to the west were suddenly taking attrition, I think that region has now run out of supplies just in total, so that means your armies can't have supplies while they're in that place just means we need to avoid it for a while and gives us an extra excuse to come over here and attack Ardan since we can steal their supplies this will prevent our attrition and gain us this new region in the same province will just make it a bit easier to manage. Plus Colchis who control the other region in the province are Hellenic that means we're not going to have a big public order penalty from cultural differences that we can't do anything about so that is all very nice. 
Now with that capture done, I don't need to be at war with either Kartli or Ardhan. Kartli didn't want peace, but Ardhan did, got some money off them, so that's nice, just makes us a bit secure up to the north. Both of those factions have one region up there to the north, so we will have to keep an eye on them just in case they come down, but they're actually quite a long way away at the moment. Mithridates is going to start heading back towards our core just to act as a reserve in case we need him to do something, and I'm going to very strategically use a route that doesn't go back through the area that has low supply so that it will so it will have a chance to replenish now back to the Seleucid front, I've got a tiny bit more money, wanted to see if this time they would agree to trade or non-aggression or anything to get our relationship started. Once again, it wasn't enough to interest them, unfortunately, we'll have to save up even more cash and come back again. Here we are, with more cash, coming back again, and this time I was even willing to offer to join one of their wars. They're at war with a faction that I created down in Syria earlier in the series, so I've actually de-allied with them to help our relationship with the Seleucids. You can see them sitting there, the Grey faction. I'm going to start moving Mithridates over to be on their border so we can actually follow up on that if we do manage to get joining that war as part of a deal. Unfortunately, as we saw in that case, they weren't interested enough, we're just going to leave it. Now the supply situation has improved somewhat, that's going to allow me to move through this region safely again, and I might even be able to use that to go on a little adventure in a little bit. First though, as the turns progressed, Atropatkan came back for another war with us. That was kind of expected since they really hated me and they might want to take Armenia back. But it does mean that my project to woo the Seleucids will have to go on the back burner because now Mithridates and his force will need to go over to attend to this new potential crisis. Fortunately, Atropatkan don't really border us anymore. There's this kind of weird border system where there are no roads between our territory so although they are adjoining us they can't really invade us very easily so that makes life much easier right now. Now with Ariobazanes I could move him down to help in the war but I don't think I need him so what I'm going to do instead is prepare him with a baggage train which I can now finally recruit for a crusade to the north. While I was preparing though Mada came and declared war on me. This is the state that actually does border me with a road and they're basically an Atropatkan spin-off so now things are a tiny bit more threatening. News there that there's some drama going down in Italy we will continue to ignore it. So this new declaration of war means I now need to move Mithridates over to this border to the northeast. That's most likely the route that either Atropatkan or Mada would use to get into Armenia. As I reach the border, I spot the enemy army. It's big, but we can't tell what it is, so we'll just hope it's loads of rubbish. Now Ariobazanes is going to start moving out. As I said, on a mission to the north, what I want to do is go and attack Kartli again. Since they won't go for a peace treaty with us, we'll just attack them and then liberate a faction up here so that we know our northern border is secure and we don't have to worry about it. That's the plan, although it will take a while to get over there. Now, in the next turn, Maada didn't do anything. Well, they did do something, actually. They took their army and they put it in a fort outside of their settlement. So I started moving up with Mithridates, hoping to make an attack. I can now see their army. It's got a few decent units in there by the looks of things, so it's not a complete trash stack. What I thought we could do initially is exploit the fact that the enemy have fortified since in forts you can deploy anywhere around the edge of the battle we could just deploy on the edge nearest to the enemy's settlement and then kill their reinforcements as they came onto the map effectively spawn camping them that would make taking the settlement after the battle super easy i could even just withdraw after that point and then go for the settlement what I realized though was that I was making a huge mistake and it was because I didn't remember about night attack. We can just do this. We can just go and take this element without fighting the fort battle at all. That's going to cut out a lot of the rubbish and achieve effectively the same thing but with less risk and less time used. So we defeat the garrison easily. Now the question was, what do I do with this? I don't want to start occupying this province. I don't want to go in this direction in general in the campaign. But I did have the option of subjugation. 
So subjugation makes the faction that owns this place your own satrapy or puppet state effectively and it forces them to declare war on all of your enemies. So I go for this, and what this does is separate Mada from Atrapatkan's alliance, put them in my alliance instead, they generate some new forces, and they're automatically at war with Atrapatkan. So suddenly, our threat along the border is now completely removed, because we have all these stacks to defend us, or even go and attack Atrapatkan and take them out. So we can actually turn the tables, and instead just go on an offensive to try and take Atrapatkan down a peg before they have any hope of threatening our territories. We can see they have an army just to the south there, and I could attack it this turn, but I'm not going to. I'm going to take some replenishment, and then next turn we go on to make this attack. It turned out that Mada had actually tried to attack it during the end turn sequence and royally failed. Despite having massive numbers, they only damaged the enemy army a little bit, so I don't know how they failed so badly. And even we seem to have a huge disadvantage on the balance bar. I wasn't really sure why, but we're going to make this attack anyway. The enemy spread themselves out over the town, ready to defend, but we're going to want to attack in only a select number of locations. Since we have lots of pikes, we need to do this in a very methodical way. First, we have to absorb their arrow fire as we come in from all those Spower Barra. Luckily, they don't have much ammo, so we'll be able to deal with that. And then we're just going to line our pikes up in the streets, protecting our flanks, and try and get as much fighting from the front going as possible, where we'll have an advantage. And it starts off right away, as we can see. The pike wall doesn't completely hold, many troops getting forward to fight the guys in hand to hand but we can kind of clear this up and try and get our lines a bit straighter and get a nice frontal engagement where we'll have the advantage going. Now I wanted to do the same thing in this other street. It was disrupted though because I didn't have my pikes on phalanx formation while they were running into position and then a couple of cavalrymen came and just plowed through our men and once your guys are engaged, they can't switch to phalanx. They're in the regular mode where they're much less willing to use their pikes. So that's a shame. Now we're kind of stuck. I'm trying to get my men out of this melee, but a couple of guys keep charging into it to keep them into melee. So that means I have to eventually pull them out of that fight entirely in the hopes of getting their phalanx mode going. There was one other possible approach I could use to attack the enemy, but I'm not going to do it. Here I'm just running away and putting some units there for later, because there are so many archers over here that it's not worth making an attack along that avenue. So now the grind on street number two has completely failed, my attack plan has failed that is, my pike unit's been completely broken up, their formation is just gone, now they're kind of half stuck in the melee and I can't really use them, and I'm going to try and get these Galatians to solve the problem, they're going to push forwards and get all of the enemies engaged, then I can bring all of my pikes out, reform them and put them back in, in a more orderly fashion. Meanwhile, the initial engagement still looking okay. Our line isn't particularly straight, but we are still only getting those frontal engagements that we were looking for. I wanted to outflank the enemy's main blob with this other set of Galatians. Unfortunately, they themselves were vulnerable to being flanking as they ran into the town. The enemy have more than half of their army in reserve right now, so we do need to kind of block off the streets behind us as we go so we don't get counterattacked too badly. Now I noticed here in the replay that one of the enemy's generic garrison units, the Eastern Spears, are actually a phalanx unit. I didn't realize that while playing. I almost charged right into the front of the phalanx here. Luckily, they decided to reform just as my rear attack came in, so we avoided any penalties for hitting a phalanx there. That was very nice. Now we'll get that attack going with the Galatians to help things out, and already we're seeing units routing away from the pikes. That's good news. Things messier on the other approach, but still making some progress there. The problem is going to arise when the enemy start deploying more and more of their reserve troops into this fight, because now we have some rear flanks exposed on our side. These Galatians, who are holding off the enemy from the east part of the town, are now going to be rear attacked by enemy heavy cavalry. My own cav managed to catch some of the enemy's jav cav, so that was nice. A nice opportunity to bring them down, but loads of speed units got attracted over to that melee. So because of that, we're going to have to try and get out of there as soon as possible. We were fortunate in that the enemy unit routed just as the spears came over, so we can just about escape from there. Not escaping there will be these Galatians, because as they're being really heavily pressured from the front, 
They're now going to be attacked from the back, both by cavalry and by some more Spara Bara. So they are now completely surrounded and tanking several units at the same time. That's going to be a bit risky. I wanted to bring back this unit of Galatians to help them by rear attacking the unit that's rear attacking them. But more enemy reserves come over and they manage to catch the unit in the flank there. So they're going to get stuck in a melee that they'll now probably have to just keep fighting in. Otherwise, they themselves will be rear attacked. At least things are going okay back over here. This enemy phalanx proving a tiny bit difficult to kill. Same thing over here. I think since they're in phalanx formation, they get a defense bonus. So they're able to block a lot of these pike attacks. But slowly we are going to be killing them and they're not going to be killing us back. So that's the important part. Now, since the enemy deployed so much of their melee reserve over to the main pass of the fight, I was able to move Mithridates to bring his Lancer Cav to start hitting this block of archers that we saw previously. They were now unguarded, so we'll start rampaging our way through them. If this was Attila, that would be suicide, but luckily in Rome, archers are much safer to attack when they're in groups. My other cavalry are trying to take down more archers in the centre of the town, but the enemy are reacting with some spears, so I think I ended up getting them out of there pretty soon. These Galatians here, the ones that we saw in trouble earlier, are in much more trouble. They're now fighting like 10 units at the same time from all directions, and that's going to cause them to rout. And once again, we'll feel the lack of a fight to the death mechanic because they are all going to die. They can't escape from that situation. They'll just do it without fighting, which is very bad for us. At least we're kind of breaking through here on the front line as we finally clear up everything from that initial engagement to the other street in the background that has been cleared up as well. So that's going to free up these pike units to try and continue their advance and find some more targets. Very messy entry over here, but this blob can now spread out and use the pikes a bit more effectively. I've also got my other cav now helping out Mithridates, taking down these archers. That's going to be nice and easy, and I'm moving up infantry to support as well. I've got some pikes in there. Plus, I've got some Galatians who are going to move towards the center of the town to once again hunt down some archers. And these guys were pretty nice in that they came to fight us in melee. So that will help us out. We'll be able to kill them easily and then keep hacking our way towards the center, where I need to take out those Sparvara to free up more room for our cav to maneuver. Now our pikes came to try and engage the enemy's blob and this is where things started to go pretty wrong. First you can see the two pike units have kind of combined and one of the units actually broke from phalanx as they joined the fight because they got too deep into things. This other phalanx, I wanted to have it engage the flank and rear of this enemy unit we can see right here but that didn't really work either. They just kind of poke at the corner. I think the problem we're facing here in general is that when you order a pike phalanx to attack a unit, it goes towards the unit's center of mass, if you will. And because this blob is all spread out and men from individual units are just all over the place in this blob as everyone's jostling around and moshing, it means that where the center of mass is doesn't really correspond to where like an attackable point on the line is. So that means as we come in to make these attacks, we get some strange behavior that for a pike phalanx is deadly because anything but a perfect engagement is the worst possible engagement with pikes. They're very sensitive. So here we saw I ran a unit up to the back of the enemy's blob, put them in phalanx and then ordered them to attack. But that attack order has been interpreted as kind of jogging along the back of the line to attack this one specific guy. And then they turn, drop their pikes and lose their advantage and it just turns into a regular fight there. Not very nice at all, not going quite as I planned. We've got some more units to try and make more attacks. But they're also now subject to arrow fire. The enemy still have some archers on the loose. I wanted to kill them but currently all of my men are being held up by this one unit of Sparabara that I thought would just go down because we were annihilating them with such superior units. But these are elite Sparabara who have armor and better skills than usual troops, so they actually held out for ages. Now, one of our other Galatian units routed, and this is going to spell a tiny bit of doom for some of our troops here because it means the enemy blob can change shape and it molds its way around to the flank of our big phalanx block. So now we're going to be majorly flank attacked by some heavy units as well. Not very nice. This other phalanx decides to push deeper into the blob. I guess it decided the target it was going for had relocated, so it's gonna push in far too close and lose some of its advantage as well. We lose a whole unit out on the other side of the blob, probably just got two flank attacks. They start getting out of there. Then some enemy archers, probably out of ammo, come in to rear attack this other phalanx. This is a great move that I think the AI is pulling by accident here. Since 
a rear attack by anything is just as good as anything else, so archers with no ammo can route units very well if they're already in a difficult combat situation, even though the archers themselves will have absolutely no chance in the melee. Fortunately, we actually managed to route them away using our cav. You can see I'm setting up the cav right next to the enemy's blob there, ready to make another attack. We need to try and route away some of the melee units, but that's going to be much more difficult because virtually everything is spearmen, so we don't really have much chance to fight them in a straight melee, but we can cycle charge and try and use our charge bonus to inflict casualties, especially with Mithridates. Unfortunately, this first charge doesn't really have the effect we were looking for. We did get some kills and a tiny bit of demoralization, but not enough. We have to get right back out of there before things go too far wrong. And still you can see our men are really struggling. We've got more routes looking like they could happen at any second. Pretty much all of our phalanx blocks are being attacked on the flank. There goes one that had quite a lot of strength left routing out of that blob. Pretty fortunate that it routed in the one direction where it was actually possible to escape since we were surrounded about 90% of the way. So we actually got away with uh, losing a massive number of troops there by the looks of things. The enemy general is attracted over for a fight on the capture point. I was quite happy to do this because his unit is weak and now we can overwhelm it with all these troops who have finally finished their melees and can form up ready to help in the main blob. Just having this fight going on is helping though because you can see lots of the units are coming away from our balances now to fight on the capture point where we can line up more properly and get nice easy fights going for ourselves. Plus we can then detach our cavalry to come and once again try to clear things up over here. Mithridates makes a big rear attack against a weak spear unit that clears up one of the units on the rear side of our phalanx blob and in fact this attack actually chain routes the entire army. They did have lots of low morale units, lots of garrison units, so I guess it doesn't take that much to chain route them, but that was very much appreciated because it seemed like the battle wasn't over yet and we still had many more losses potentially on the cards. Fortunately, they gave up and that's the end of that. A close victory, a very hairy assault that proved to be much more difficult than expected and was a fun lesson in how to and how to not use pikes. Thank you.